introduce you to FaceTime. So hopefully some of you have um, attended some of our masterclasses and webinars previously. Um, FaceTime is an initiative, it's um, a group of resources for exhibitors to help you um, get the most out of your investment in exhibitions. So we have a series of uh, tools available to you. So we have um, exhibitor masterclasses which uh, we run um, throughout the course of the year and we've got one coming up next week at the SECC. Um, that's on the 26th of November. So um, if you're not already registered, please speak to your organisers and you'll be able to get a promotional code for entering um, that um, masterclass uh, in Glasgow next week. And the masterclasses are great because they have um, a series of speakers um, that talk about um, on-stand design. Um, we, th we talk about sales of your, and how to get the most out of your sales team. And we also uh, cover things like branding and um, how to engage with your audiences before the exhibitions. And next week is going to be particularly great because we've got um, a chap called Richard Melender coming back who is a former hostage negotiator and he talks about listening skills and he, he's gone down really well at previous events. Um, we also have a series of videos. Um, these are really for you to use um, at your own uh, in your own organizations with your team so if for example if you have a meeting where you're wanting to talk about um, the how to get the best stand design or, or get the most out of sponsorship sponsorship <laughs> at an exhibition then um, these they are really great because they're sort of two or three minutes long and it really brings your meetings to life uh, for you so um, we also have webinars, so we have a series of webinars um, that um, we run. This is um, our second one that we'll have done. We've got another one coming up on the 9th of um, December, which will be at 12 o'clock, and that will be on branding and language, and how um, language is important to your brand, and also how um, your team needs to be using similar language to suit your brand, but also to suit your audience for the exhibition. So um, exhibitions are very uh, many and varied, so you might be talking to students one day, you might be talking to um, commercial um, businesses the next or consumers, so it's really uh, changing the language to suit your um, and then we do also have um, some guides available. Again, these can be used in presentations or as aid memoirs for just before the uh, exhibition if there's any last minute tips that you, that you may need. So um, I'm just going to hand over now to um, Fiona. Um, Fiona's uh, grown her business uh, through um, ex exhibiting. Um, if we do have any questions as we go throughout, if you please um, pop them into the question um, box on the um, control panels that you have in your webinars and we'll run through um, two or three key ones at the end of the um, webinar. So I'm just going to hand over to Fiona now. So Fiona, right. would you like to introduce yourself? Yes, hello, good morning everyone. I'm Fiona Humberstone. I'm um, one of those currently trendy slashy people. So I'm an author, um, I run workshops and, um, and speak at events like FaceTime. Um, and I'm also a creative director for brands. Um, so what I want to talk to you about today is how you can use exhibitions to grow your business. Ooh, sorry, something very strange is happening with my slides. Just let me flip back. Okay, so um, so a little bit of background on me, not too much. Um, as I say, I run workshops uh, for creative entrepreneurs. Um, I've written two books so far, so one on exhibitions, using exhibitions to grow your small business, and one on um, styling your brand, which is currently number one on Amazon, which is quite exciting for me. Uh, anyway, so what are we going to talk about today is how are you going to use exhibitions to grow your business. Now, um, about, I guess, 10 years ago, I, um, I was work well, no, a bit further back, 12 years ago, I was working for a chain of print stores um, and um, had a quite a big job. I was regional director. I used to look after um, 40, 50 company-owned stores and franchises. I was away all the time. Um, 
just about to go to New York and open their New York branch when I discovered that I was pregnant at the age of 24. Not really part of the plan, um, but actually the best thing that could have ever happened to me. And um, rather than going back to work, I actually decided that I wanted to start a business on my own. Now, the challenge for me was that we were living in the most expensive part of the country. We were living in Surrey, and um, I needed to pay the mortgage. So failing, having a failing business wasn't really an option. My husband's a policeman, um, so uh, great stable job, but not really enough to pay the mortgage. So I had to make my business work, and quickly. And um, because I'd been a regional director in my last job, I didn't actually have any clients, so I set up um, a print franchise to start with. And I didn't have that nice bank of clients that most sensible people starting a business would have. Um, I needed to make it work really quickly. And I found this exhibition that was going to happen the second day that I started my business. It was called Winning Business, and it was at Sandown Racecourse. And the idea was that there would be thousands of people going along, learning you know, a bit like um, the FaceTime thing, learning tips and tricks that they could use to grow their business. So I thought, well, that's perfect. Every small business needs print, so let me go along and um, get some leads, because I didn't know how else I was going to get any. Um, on my first, so my, at my first exhibition, that second day in business, I picked up 100 leads. And over the course of the year, I turned 70 of those into paying clients. Now, what I've worked out is that my story is quite unusual. Um, I had a really successful business, grew it, um, developed a design agency, sold that in 2012, and have exhibited so many times over the course of that business. Um, and exhibitions were really a core part of what I was doing. They were amazing for building my database, um, growing my leads and um, getting clients. But as well as exhibiting, I also decided to set up my own exhibition. So I think 2008 was the first one. We set up a local exhibition in Guildford. And um, talking to potential exhibitors, what I found was that people would say to me, oh, we did it. And, um, we, you know, we just didn't have much luck. And that was quite a common story. People would say, um, you know, we've exhibited in the past, and it hasn't worked. And what I found was that there were some common reasons for doing that. And we'll, we'll have a look at what those are in a minute. But over the years, I've sort of honed my own process for exhibiting, and also shared it with loads of my clients, and now put it in my book as well. And, you know, the truth is that Doing well at an exhibition doesn't have to be difficult. It doesn't need to be um, something that takes up loads of your time. But I do genuinely believe that every single person can um, use exhibitions to grow their business. It's just working out how. So why do most people or businesses fail to exhibit prop properly? I think the first thing is that they're at the wrong exhibition, and we'll have a look at that in a minute. But you know, you have to make sure that your business is relevant to the people that are going. Um, secondly, people don't capture leads. Um, and we'll talk about that in a bit more detail later. But I don't just mean giving away donuts in return for a business card. I mean actually capturing proper leads. And then probably the third is the most important of all of them. Um, people just not following up on the leads. So in my last business, I used to do some exhibition consultancy. And um, I worked with a web company um, who were going to a local exhibition. And I said to them, OK, so um, how many leads did you get from your last show? And how many clients did you get? And he just looked at me with a really embarrassed smile on his face and said, well, I don't know. They're still in the shoebox. And I just think that's <laughs> really common. You know, you go, you have a good day, it's exhausting, and then you get drawn back into um, the day-to-day -day life. And suddenly, six months later, you're too embarrassed to follow up. So um, we'll talk about some of the things you can do to follow up. And then fourth and final thing, you know, someone that spends her life immersed in branding, 
um, I'm going to say the stand is important. But you know, you have to remember this is your shop window for the day. And I've worked with clients on shows like A Place in the Sun and um, Grand Designs Live, um, right down to small local shows. It doesn't matter how big it is. You need to make the right impression, and you need to make a strong impact. So we'll have a look at that as well. So three things you need to do. That's all you need to do to succeed at exhibitions. One is plan properly. Secondly, be creative, make an impact. And thirdly, and probably most importantly, follow up. So things to think about before you go to the show are why are people going? So before you even spend money on a stand, look at the exhibitor's website, and I've got some examples for you in a minute, and look at why are people going? What are the people going's needs, motivations, and problems? And how do you make your, your business relevant to them? Most of us run businesses that have multiple offerings. So just turning up and saying, I do a bit of everything, isn't going to win you any business. So think about how can you make your business relevant to them, and what's your offering for the show? And I don't just mean 25% of windows. I mean, actually, what is it that you're going to focus on for the show? What, what's your message that you want to get out there? So if we have a look at um, the website for the Business Startup Show, which is happening in a couple of weeks. Um, looking at the sliding um, what are called hero images at the top, you've got that message, network with over 25,000 other businesses, um, 250 seminars, 350 exhibitors, 12 masterclasses, it's free to attend. It's pretty obvious just from a quick glance at that home page that this is a show for people starting a business, thinking about starting a business, have just started a business, and they're going primarily for the seminars. So you need to make sure that whatever you're doing at that show is going to capture the attention of people who are just starting out. So if I was running with my print business still, I would be creating a really targeted um, collection of sort of startup pack maybe. Um, and I did used to exhibit at these kind of shows, and I used to um, give away a um, branding package, which really used to help um, build my leads, but we'll come to that later. Um, Pulse is, I don't know how many of you have heard of that, but Pulse is a show that's held at Olympia in May, and um, it's all about the kind of interior trends. Uh, it's a show for retailers. So people going to Pulse are tend to be retail buyers. They may be from big companies like Selfridges or Harrods or Harvey Nicks. They may be from smaller retailers, but you need to show a really curated collection. You need to show the stuff that's on trend. And the nice thing about the Pulse website is that they share with you what the trends are. So actually, if I was a designer maker, I'd be looking at those trends, and I'd be thinking about, right, what have I got in my collection that fits with that trend? Because not only am I going to get more press, but it's going to be relevant to the people that are going. Spirit of Christmas, which has just been and gone, um, that's a show that's for consumers looking to um, buy Christmas presents. So how can you make your products compelling to buy on the day? You know, lots of people going, just have a mooch around, get ideas. How can you get them to part with their money? You know, what do you need to do? OK, so once you've thought about who's going and what your message is going to be, you need to plan your stand. So thinking hard about what do I want people to know, think, and do. Um, this is an example of a stand that is just too busy. Um, I don't even know what they're selling. I think they're selling holiday apartments. So actually, just one compelling image with a message in the background would have been enough. Because if you think about your sales process, um, think about you know what where does the exhibition fall into your sales process? We just looked at Spirit of Christmas where you want people to buy on the day. Um, Pulse quite often people will take orders at the show, but actually the bulk of the potential comes afterwards. And even at a show like Spirit of Christmas, you still want to be capturing a list because again, the the real value of doing exhibitions for me is in the database that it gives you after. Um, 
So think about your sales process. Think about where does this show fit into my sales process? Am I going to sell or am I just going to generate leads? If you're selling a holiday apartment, you're not going to sell it on the back of a show. So you don't need detailed information. You just need to capture people's attention, get them to stop and talk to you, give you their details, and then you can follow up with them. They're probably not going to buy until they get out to the place and see it. So you don't need the detail. Just create an impact. Um, again, you know, not the most marvelous of impacts here. Um, so try and think about covering your entire stand, um, create a compelling and cohesive message, and obviously, you know, it's a bit mean to have a photo of them when they're probably tired at the end of the day, but you do need to remember you're on show the whole time. Um, <laughs> I don't know when to start with this. Um, again, you know, you don't need the detailed information. Um, create a, a, a nice impact. Um, my the bane of my life is those horrible grey walls that you get on exhibition shell schemes. You can tell that they have put, put some thought into it. There's a bit of a blue theme going on. But actually, it doesn't have to cost you a lot of money to cover up those walls. So think hard about what message do we need to get out there? And um, and how can we make a nice impact? You know, this is their shop window for the day. Um, again, you know, not, not loads needed to be said on that, but um, it does need to look more inspiring. Uh, with grey walls again. At least with this one, I think they have got nice, relevant messages, and you know what the business is all about. So if they had even just covered the walls in brown paper or something, I think it would have looked better. So things to do, good things to do with your stand. Um, the first thing is create an impact. So you've planned your message. You've thought about why people are going, what you want them to know, think, and do. Just keep it really simple. You know, what, what could be more compelling than little capital, minimum risk, maximum profit? This is obviously some kind of investment show. That would make me stop. And the thing with an exhibition is people are wandering around, and it's your job, first of all, with the stand, capture their attention and to get them to stop. The next thing you need to do is make them feel welcome and make them feel like they want to come onto your stand, which actually can be quite a psychological barrier. So think about what can we do to get them to stop, so clear messaging, um, and then how can you draw them in? And I love this stand by Rebel Rebel because they've actually they've got a DJ on the booth, they've created amazing floral arrangements. They're a top London florist. This is at the um, Sign a Wedding show a few years back. But they've really created an impact and a, a strong sort of draw. And if I was a bride, I would want to go onto that stand. Um, same with this one. I can't remember which floral designer this is by, but so well thought through. There's not a hint of grey wool. And they've really showcased what they can do. And I think what, what's interesting about this is they haven't said we can do everything. They've just shown one compelling design that sort of shows the scope of what they're capable of. Um, Flujo, really nice. I know lots of you are business to business. This is um, a home working company at a business to business show. And what he's done is actually put a photograph of a home office on the back wall, which I just think, again, is really compelling and really draws you in. And then the book stand at the front is actually a physical product. So he's kind of created a bit of a, uh, I don't know how you say it, Trump loyal or something, uh, a, a mural, if you like, a photograph at the back. And then on the side, he, he's got a thing that says, create your ideal home office. Um, this one is one that um, I created for a photographer several years back. And if you look now, it's been replicated quite a lot. But I think that's because Again, it creates a real impact. It fits with Matt's brand. Um, it creates a very strong impression. He borrowed furniture from Laura Ashley, and you know we propped it. And you've got beautiful photographs, which just create a strong impact. And then on the the uh, table, we've got um, the albums as well that people can flick through. So it's just about creating a nice space and um, making being aware of who you're talking to and what impression you want to create. Um, 
The nice thing about exhibitions, unlike lots of other forms of marketing, is that they are live, so you can involve all the senses. So think about how can we bring our business to life. So this is a jewellery designer stand, and what they're doing is doing um, hair and makeup demonstrations and actually showing how the bits of jewellery can work with different bridal styles. Um, think as well about you know what can you do to bring what you're doing to life. So it might be demonstrations, it might be talks. So the web um, company I worked with, they um, created 10-minute talks every hour. They couldn't get a speaker slot, so they did talks on the stand. And that's great, because that draws a crowd in. Um, think about you know smell and taste, and all those things of bringing it back to your brand and bringing it back to life. So a couple of ideas there for your stand and certainly some things not to do. Um, now the follow-up. Now I totally get that after a show most of us feel like this guy. You know, you've you've been out of the office for whether it's a day or a week or sometimes they go on even longer. Um, you know, you've had all the build up to it, you've had all the, you know, loading your car up, taking it to the show, packing it down. Actually the last thing you want to do is get on the phone, but if you want to make the most of exhibition, you absolutely have to follow up. Um, one thing that I think is massively shocking is that 80% of the leads are never followed up. And I kind of find that shocking, but also not surprising, because if, if I think about my own experience and the people I've spoken to, and the people that say that exhibitions don't work for them, when you probe a bit, Generally, it's because they haven't bothered to follow up. And I think if you take one thing away from this morning, just remember that you're going because it gives you access to a very targeted group of people. So you're looking at the website to look at who are those people, why are they going. And if they're relevant to your audience, to your business, you actually can't get a better way, I don't think, of boosting your database quickly. So the key thing is that you capture data and that you follow it up. And we'll talk about how you capture data in a minute, because what I'm not talking about is you harvesting those generic spreadsheets that come out from sometimes from the organizers. Um, I think we're really good in England, particularly, about um, feeling that follow-up is a bit vulgar. But actually, if you want to do well, you need to follow up. So. By that, I mean actually getting on the phone, not just emailing, although I think that's important, but actually getting on the phone and speaking to people. Now, when I um, exhibited at my first show, I had only just started my business. We were not on the high street. I had no way of building leads. I had the time to follow up, and I made the time to follow up, but it took me two, three months probably. I spoke to every single person. And I spoke to them until they either bought something from me or they um, we agreed that I would speak to them three months, six months down the line, um, or you know they said they weren't interested, and that was fine. But I wouldn't have got seventy percent of my um, I wouldn't have converted seventy percent of my leads had I not bothered to follow up. So it's absolutely essential. Um, before you follow up, you've got to capture data. And for me, it's all about running a relevant competition. So I think when people talk about competitions at um, exhibitions, they think about giving away an iPad or giving away donuts in return for um, a business card or giving away a bottle of champagne. What happens with that is that you get business cards from people who want the bottle of champagne or who want the iPad. You then try and follow up with them, and it all becomes a bit awkward because they don't want to hear from you. And therefore you're put off. Now, if you run a relevant competition, suddenly you'll get less leads, but you'll get more relevant leads, and you'll have a better experience of follow-up, and suddenly exhibitions will become much more pro positive experiences. So think about what you can give away that's relevant to your business. Give away the most attention-grabbing, large uh, prize that you can possibly bear to give away. So when I was running my print and design company, that used to be um, a rebrand. 
Um, if I was an accountant, I might give away end of year accounts or a tax return or something. Um, if if I was an airport parking company, I'd give away a week's free airport parking, because that way I'm only giving I'm only capturing data from people that actually want what I do, that are actually in the market. Um, and suddenly you've got a list of people that are even more relevant than the people that have bothered to come to the show. Um, you need to have people's permission, particularly if it's consumer. I think most of you on this call are um, business to business, in which case um, the rules are slightly more relaxed. But I, th I still think it's good practice that if you're going to add someone to your database, they need to have given you permission. Um, so by that I mean having a clear poster that explains that you know what your prize is and also what you can do with the data afterwards. I think there's nothing wrong with adding people to a list, but you do need to make sure they know about it. Um, when you're at the show, it's really, really important if you have a good conversation with somebody, you make notes either on the back of the business card or on their entries. I used to think that um, I would remember, but you absolutely won't. Um, you know, if you have seven or eight good conversations, you'll have forgotten by tomorrow. So just put some notes on to um, jog your memory the next day. Now, before you even hit the bar, I would recommend that at the end of the day, you sort your leads into priorities. So people that are absolutely ready to buy, you need to speak to them tomorrow. Um, certainly in the, the industry that I was in, if I didn't speak to them, my competitors would, and then I'd lose sale. So I needed to get on it straight away. So before we even went home, I took along three envelopes, um, urgent, important, and then sort of the people that either you didn't get to speak to and you didn't know about, or um, the ones that you just aren't sure, but you, you need to speak to them, but you don't need to speak to them straight away. Um, so prioritizing the follow-up is absolutely key. The other thing, just again, skipping ahead to before the show, is it's all very well me saying, you know, follow up quickly. But what quite often happens is that people get to the end of the show, they're exhausted, they get drawn back into the day-to-day -day of running a business, and suddenly a week's gone by and you've forgotten to follow up. So for me, the obvious thing to do is create everything before the show. So before the show, write your follow-up email that says who won the prize and what, what you can offer people. Um, create time-bound offers that make people act quickly. So if you were offering a discount on your windows or your airport parking, um, get that email ready to go and get follow-up reminders ready to go as well so that all you have to do is get your leads onto your database and get it sent out. Um, we used to do mailing as well because most people don't bother to mail anymore, so you can really make a splash. So again, get your follow-up letters and any collateral ready to go. Um, Clear, the other thing that's really key is clear your diary. So actually schedule in half a day for the next week where or two where you're going to commit to making those follow-up calls and you're going to get emails out and all the other bits you need to do because if you find that everyone's filling up your diary, um, you're going to miss opportunities. And this, for me, is the gold mine. So things you need to do in the short term. Telephone calls to every single person that entered your competition. Um, emailing after the show and then mailing brochures and collateral where it's relevant. Now, I have to say, the business that I run now is quite different to the business that I ran before. So one of the reasons that I managed to convert so many people um, at my first show is because I was selling business cards for £50. So I had a really um, easily accessible entry-level product that it was easy for people to say yes to. What I do now, the consulting, I certainly wouldn't expect to get anywhere like the number of leads or like the number of um, clients. But saying that, I don't need that many clients either because my average order value is higher. So when you're thinking about your offering for the show, think about what's relevant. So for example, if I was going to the business startup show, I'd be promoting my book on how to style your brand, which is £20, rather than my you know, consultancy services, which run into the thousands. So just think 
hard about what the offering is and how you make it relevant to the show. Um, longer term follow up, again, you know, the phone calls were key, but it took me a year to convert 70% of my clients. And that is because I was persistent in the follow up. So making sure you're sending out regular email newsletters, you're active on social media. So, you know, then it was Twitter, now it's probably Instagram, Facebook, um, maybe LinkedIn, depending on who your clients are. Um, blogging to share your expertise and also doing mailings where it's relevant. So making sure that you stay in contact with people so that they remember you. And then finally, how do you measure your success? So think about what's it going to take to get a return on investment for your business. Is it about new customers? Is it about sales leads? Is it about reigniting existing customers? Is it a product launch? Is it building a list? You know, why are you going to the show and what do you need to get out of it? Um, use your key performance indicators, so your KPIs. Think about your average order value. What does your average client spend over the year, and what's the average lifetime value of the customer? So I talked to you before about you know, my customers generally spending about 50 quid on a business card. Um, the average customer spend was about 150 pounds, and over a year, they used to spend about 700 pounds. So suddenly, my initial investment of 3,000 into that exhibition, I didn't need many clients to make it work. But I think it's important that you understand and also that your team understands what it's going to take to make it work. Um, how many inquiries do you need to get per month? What, um, what's your conversion rate at every stage of the, the sales cycle? And you know, think about what's relevant to your business, because what's relevant to mine will be very different to yours. So thank you very much. So key things to remember for me are um, plan, be creative with your stand, and make sure you follow up effectively. Um, there's loads more stuff, more branding relevant, I have to admit, on FionaHumberstone.com and TheBrandStylist.com. And um, my book, Exhibit How to Use Exhibitions to Grow Your Small Business, is available from Amazon. Um, we've got time for a couple of questions. So if anyone's got any questions, would you like to add them to your questions bar? I think we have had one question come in already, um, Fiona. It was um, around FaceTime, but if the, which I'll, I'll cover off in a second. But if there are any um, questions on Fiona's presentation in the meantime, while I'm just uh, responding to that, um, then please um, please type them in and we, we can go through them. But I think you've covered off quite quite a lot there, Fiona. I think, um, <laughs> you know, I think we might have answered lots of questions as you've gone along, so that's great. Um, but the um, the question on FaceTime was, um, it was about when the when is the next masterclass and how much is it? So um, the next masterclass is a week on Thursday. It's in Glasgow. Um, that's the 26th of November. It's at the SECC. Um, and um, there is um, a, a, a day um, rate of £150. However, if you are exhibiting um, with an AEO member organizing company, then um, you can talk to the event organizers, um, so the events team, um, either your key sales contact or your key marketing contact there, and um, they should be able to give you a promotional code, um, which means you could register um, free of charge for that event and, and future um, exhi uh, exhibitor masterclasses. Um, and as I've said, the next webinar is going to be on the 9th of um, December. And again, that will be uh, free of charge. It's at 12 p.m. Um, so I think There's a couple loads of questions, of questions coming in. in. Yes. yes OK. So Would you um, like to? Shall I start? Yes, yeah, absolutely. So I'll start with Jackie, Jacqueline. Jacqueline says, I run a sauce business and we sell our jars and bottles at local markets. I'm struggling to decide the best way to convert our usual market store into an exhibition stand. Um, I'm assuming that you need to convert it into an exhibition stand because you're looking to get um, retailers interested. Is that right? Um, if that's the case, I think you know loads of the stuff that people do at farmers markets or local markets are, you know, it's all about theatre, and that's the point with exhibition stands, isn't it? So I wouldn't change it too much, but think about what you offer retailers that um, other people don't. Think about, um, you know, the usual tastings and um, 
you know, just drawing people into the product, really, um, and think about what is it that you're offering people, what information do they need to take away, because the kind of information they need on um, a market stall is going to be very different to a, an exhibition where you're trying to attract retailers. So I hope that helps. Um, yes, Reese asks a really good question, actually. Reese says, uh, we work with schools, so following up is hard. How do we keep it going when the lead seems so hot at the show, but we don't get to talk to them afterwards? I know that's really frustrating, because teachers, rightly so, are really difficult to get hold of. <laughs> um, it's really tricky, isn't it? Because you, you, know, you can phone a school, and they'll be in a lesson, and you can't get through. So I wonder if there's a better way of asking them at the show how, how it's best to get hold of them. Um, Postal mailing probably is a better way of getting through. Um, email as well. Um, I think I'd just be talking to people about, you know, talking to your teachers that you're coming in contact with about, you know, what kind of times are best to talk to you, what kind of days, because um, I think you've got to work around them to a certain point, haven't you? I know the teachers at my kids' school don't often go home till seven o'clock, so whether you're just trying to phone them between maybe four and seven rather than nine till three. I don't know. Um, but I think I'd be talking to the school teachers. Um, have we got time for one more, Jenna? I think we have, yeah. Oh, goodness, um, loads. Yes, there are lots on there. <laughs> okay. So I think I think with there are lots of um, questions on here which can be answered um, by um, the FaceTime team as well. So um, please feel free to contact us afterwards. Um, I'll give you our website address, which has got all of our contact details on www.facetime.org.uk. Things like motivating staff on stand and things like that um, are, are, are topics that we do cover um, both in the guides and at the masterclasses. So maybe something that can help there. But if, if you want to uh, choose a couple more, Fiona, then please feel free, and then we'll wrap up, I think. Okay, so Kate. Pillar says, we're exhibiting at EcoBuilds, audience of architects. Do you have any ideas for effective gifts for a competition? Because they won't actually be using our product. They just build them into specifications. Um, it's hard without knowing what your products are. But mm. um, architects are into funky things. And yes, I love gadgets, don't they? Yeah, they love gadgets. One thing I did with um, a company called Roger Lewis, who exhibited, they um, design furniture for um, people like John Lewis, um, Heels, Conran, and they're a white label company. So they design and manufacture sofas, but they don't, they're do not they not consumer facing. Um, and we were thinking, OK, what do you give away? You give away a sofa, all you're going to get is a whole load of people that are never going to be good leads and just want the sofa. So what we came up with was a design day so they have. So the whole point about Roger Lewis is that they create iconic private label sofas for for big brands, but also smaller online retailers. And we wanted to promote that. So we came up with this idea of a design day where you spend the day with their creative director at the factory, have a tour of the factory, and you come up with a sofa ref that reflects your brand. And I think that's something a that we could charge for in the long term, but also you're then getting people that are likely to become relevant buyers. So I don't know if there's anything in that that you can do, Kate, but um, you know, don't give architects an iPad. Give them, you know, try and come up with something that will excite them that's a bit different to the stress balls or the notebooks or um, you know, the sketchbooks. Um, so let's see if we've got any more. Um, Oh, this is tricky. How can I convince my old school boss that exhibiting is effective? He believes that door knocking is the most effective method of growing business. Um, I guess it depends what what you do, but I, I haven't met anyone that believes that for a very long time. So, um, I mean, what can you say? I think um, it depends on what your business does and who your audience are. Um, but I think the nice thing about exhibitions is that people are coming to you. So they're already a warm lead, I think, generally. with, um, And then that puts you in a position of power, doesn't it? It puts you in a position of strength and power, because people are attracted to your brand. Generally, 
if you're cold calling, you're on the back foot. You seem desperate. Um, you you um, you know, it's all too easy for people to literally or um, or sort of uh, meta metaphorically slam the door in your face. So I would be talking to him about um, building equity in his brand and uh, making your business more appealing and making doing business easier as well. So I hope that helps. That's great, Fiona. Thank you very much for um, your presentation today, and um, we hope some of you, uh, some of the delegates, can join us on the next um, uh, seminar that we're going to be running on the 9th of December. So thank you very much. Thank you.